Hey there, geographers, and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Last time we spoke, we looked at Weber's least cost theory. We talked about bulk gaining goods, bulk reducing, agglomeration, and the different sectors of the economy. Today, we're going to be going into Unit 7, Topic 3, where we're going to be looking at measures of development. Now, before you get started, I just want to warn you, there's a lot of vocabulary in this video. But fear not, geographers, you've got this. Just make sure you focus, pay attention to the main points, and you'll be fine. Now, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and let's get ready to roll. Now, when talking about the economy, we have to understand the difference between a formal economy and an informal economy. The formal economy is regulated or monitored by the government and taxed by the government. Think about your traditional hourly job or salary job, where the informal economy is not monitored or taxed by the government. Think about business that's done under the table. For example, many squatter settlements may have informal economies within them. Oftentimes, people provide goods and services to people with in a squatter settlement, however, none of the production is reported or monitored. Oftentimes, less developed countries will have a larger informal economy compared to the developed countries. Now, an informal economy is pretty difficult for us to measure, but a formal economy is not. One of the ways in which we can measure a formal economy is by looking at a country's GDP. GDP is gross domestic product, and what it shows us is the total value of goods and services that are produced within a country's boundaries in one year. This will show us how much production is happening and how much consumption is happening as well. If GDP is going up, that shows the economy is doing well. More people are spending money, businesses are investing, and we're starting to see the economy grow. If GDP is decreasing, that normally shows an economic pullback, and it shows that the economy could be struggling. Another indicator we can use is GMP, which stands for Gross National Product. This indicator is very similar to a country's GDP. However, there's one key difference. GMP measures the goods and services produced by only a country's citizens. It factors in both domestic production and also production abroad. This means that the GMP will show us the total value of production of a country citizens regardless of where they're living in the world. To make sure you don't confuse GDP and GMP, let's go over an example. Let's say that Toyota moves some production over to the United States. They're going to start building cars within the boundaries of the United States of America. This new production will be part of the United States GDP since the production is happening within the United States. However, it would not be part of the United States' GNP. Instead, it would be part of Japan's GMP since Toyota is a Japanese company. Our last gross indicator is gross national income, or GNI for short. This indicator is pretty similar to a country's GDP. To find the GNI, we would take the GDP of a country, which is the total value of goods and services that are produced within the country's borders, minus then income that's sent abroad to foreign countries, and then add net income that a country would receive from production that is abroad. To simplify things, think about it this way. If Tesla, which is an American company, produces cars in China, and Tesla Tesla then sends profits back from China to the United States, that money would be factored into the United States' GNI. One last aspect of GNI that you'll want to have an understanding of is the GNI per capita. This indicator shows us what's going on with the standard of living of a country. The higher this number is, the better it is for the citizens of that country. To find it, we would take the country's national income and divide it by the population. Now, I do want to highlight for AP Human Geography, don't worry as much about memorizing the formulas or being able to calculate everything out. Instead, focus on what these measures mean and how we can interpret the information. It's likely that you may see on a test in your class or on the AP test a chart or table that's using these indicators and it's already calculated out for you. So it's important for you to be able to understand what information you're looking at and how we can see how that impacts the citizens of the states that we're looking at. Other ways in which we can measure social and economic development for a country could be to look at a country's income distribution, which shows how well is distributed throughout society. Or we could look at society's infant mortality rate, the ability for citizens to access healthcare facilities or education, or society's literacy rate, just to name a few. We can also look at development of society by looking at a country's GII, which stands for the Gender Inequality Index. This index measures reproductive health, empowerment, and labor market participation rate to illustrate the amount of inequality or equality in a country. 
We can see that countries that have a lower GII have a less inequality between genders in society. And countries that have a higher GII have more inequality between genders. Right. Lastly, we could look at a country's HDI, which stands for the Human Development Index. This index looks at the life expectancy, the expected years of schooling, and, and also a country's gross national income per capita to better illustrate what's going on within a society. Countries can score anywhere between a zero and one for the HDI. Countries that are closer to a score of one see citizens living longer, attending more school, and having a higher standard of living, while countries that are closer to zero see a lower standard of living and have less access to healthcare services and educational services. By understanding these different economic and social indicators and measurements, we can better understand the different economic and social opportunities that will be presented to citizens of certain states. And just like that, geographers, we're done with another topic review video. Now comes the time to practice. We had a lot of vocab in this video, so make sure you answer the questions on the screen and check your answers down below. Also, if you need a little bit more help with AP Human Geography, check out my ultimate review packet. It is a great resource that can help you get an A in your class and a five on the national exam. Thank you so much for watching the video today, geographers. If you found value in it, consider subscribing. That way you get notified when new videos get posted and also, you know, it supports the channel. Thank you again for watching the video, geographers. I'm Mr. Sin, and until next time, I'll see you guys online.